So at the end of the year, many times the business is faced with the problem of saying, I'm not sure if this report is accurate and they got to go through their vendor list to try to make sure that they've marked off those vendors that they need to issue a 1099 for. So there's a couple ways you could do that. We could go to the tab to the left and we could just go into our expenses on the left hand side and go through our list of vendors and then just kind of sort through our vendor list and look for those vendors that are non-incorporated. They're non-corporate vendors and then determine whether or not they are a corporation or not. We can usually determine by the name if they're incorporated. And then sometimes the name is a little, we don't not sure if they're incorporated or not. And then we can choose the ones that we're iffy about and do further research, contact the vendor possibly to determine whether or not we need to issue a 1099 to them. Now, if we do need to issue a 1099 to them, we're gonna need their EIN number, which is like kind of like a social security number for a business if they don't have one because they're a sole proprietorship, we're typically gonna need their social security number. Therefore, when you do business with small businesses, sole proprietors, you wanna ask that typically upfront so you don't run into this problem at the, at the end of the year. And if you go onto the IRS website, which is at irs.gov, irs you can look up, say, a W-9 form to help you with that uh, requesting process, request for taxpayer identification number. You need to have that because again, what you're really trying to do is give this information not to the contractor, although you're required to do that. The IRS wants it, the government wants it, and the government wants to know who they are in terms of address and identification number so they can double check that they're reporting the income on uh, their taxes. So this method works pretty good, but sometimes you might have a lot of vendors in here that you actually didn't pay because maybe you paid them in the past and you didn't do business with them in the current time frame. It would be best to go through these vendors and say, if I'm not doing business with them anymore, I'll make them inactive and you can really clean up your vendors list. However, you might say, look, I'd like to just run a report for people that I've paid in the current time frame and then that might limit this list a little bit so I can then uh, find the ones I need. So let's go to the tab to the right. I'm gonna right click on this tab and duplicate this uh, tab again and look for a report that might give us that information. Reports down below. I'm gonna close up the hamburger and I'm gonna go down to the expense reports down here, which are the expense reports. Here they are. Let's make it a little bit smaller. And now I missed now I messed the whole thing up. So the, so the expense reports are here. And then I'm going to look at the expenses by vendor summary. So expenses by vendor summary. And then I'm going to change the date up top 010122 tab 123122 tab and run it. So now you've got your expenses broken out by uh, how much you paid to each of these. And this might be a little bit less of a list just giving you the information for those that, that you actually paid. Now note that this report will only work if whenever you paid someone, you applied the vendor properly so that I can have a subledger of the vendor. Sometimes when people use bank feeds, they forget to, to add the vendor and they can still record the transaction. That's gonna make it difficult <laughs> to, to comply with your 1099 uh, requirements. But most of the time, this report could be another one to look at. It also gives you the dollar amount for that time frame, So you can see if they're over the threshold, which I think is like $600. But even if they're under the threshold, if they're subject to a 1099, you still want to mark it off so that the report can be run uh, based on the, the threshold of the dollar amount could be run when you run like this report, for example. Okay, so let's go, let's go back to the first tab. Now, if you find the 1099s or the the vendors that need to be 1099'd. So now I'm in the vendors tab. Let's say this person needs to be 1099'd. I can edit them. And now we've got that familiar editing tab. And then I'm gonna scroll down to the tax information. We would need to give them a tax ID. So it would usually be like a 95 type of number that we would have. And we're gonna track the 1099 information here and that ticking of this off should then add this one to our list when we run the 1099 report so we got to make sure that all the vendors that are applicable have been ticked off 
thusly. So I'm gonna save that. And then I, if I go back to the, to the report here and I run my 1099 report, run it again, now we've got the two people in here. There was no one paid to this one, so it's not really applying the dollar threshold, but there you have it. So that report can help you to kind of process the 1099. So once you have this report that's accurate, 